BrewTube, DJ here, back at you with yet another post BrewTube workout beer review. And yes, I've worked up a mighty thirst again, and I've decided, you know what, I'm not going for an IPA or just a lager beer or some one of the wheat beers or something that's classified as refreshing. I'm going to go with something I just feel like drinking tonight. And what is that? Well, hmm, I'm also going local. That's right, we're going local down to... Fordham Brewing, who was originally out of Annapolis, Maryland, and their parent company, the Rams Head Group, is still located in Na Annapolis, Maryland. However, they brew both Fordham beer and, um, who is it, the other one? Dominion um, beer in Dover, Delaware. So, not that far away, especially when my parents got a beach house and all that. We can hit them up for a bit of brew. So, what do we got on tap tonight? Not on tap, because I don't have a tap. Because I'm broke ass and I wish I could have a tap. That would be like really cool and I could do, hey guys, look, I'm going to pour my beer from the tap because I had a whole keg. <sighs> but not to digress too far. We've got a bottle tonight. What do we have a bottle of? We've got a bottle of Fordham Doppelbach. Now, back in the day, we're going back to 1995. DJ's graduated from college. He's with his mates at the pub and he's drinking this new craft beer stuff. And the strong beer that they only served in a schooner because it's 8% was what? Fordham Doppelbach. It was the big beastie boy on the block. You almost had to wait in line to get it. They would only serve it one year at a time. It's a seasonal brew. In the winter, fall months, and the fall, beginning of winter months, man, people would scrum up. I gotta have this beer. Gotta have it. And they would beat down the door and it would be gone and you wouldn't get a drop of it. And I just adored this beer. Me and my friends would go in there and we'd have two, three schooners and we'd be all, uh, you know, crunked and happy and wow man this is the best strongest beer ever now in today's standards eight percent is almost mild because people are producing nine percent ten percent fifteen percent beers every day all day however given historical perspective for a Doppelbach eight percent is quite strong so Doppelbach is of course a lager beer but they put a bunch of caramel malts in it and everything and to produce increase the fermentable sugars in the beer to make it sweet and yummy so this, like I said, is an 8 percenter, 10 percent 10 IBU. So let's get the top popped on this one. And don't you guys think this, this is a really attractive bottle, I think. The Fordham Crown and everything, man. I, I just like this beer. This has got sentimental value to me. And also, right here on the back, guys, oh, look at that. The date's right there, clearly marked right on it, so I know if it's fresh or not. And if it's not fresh and I'm drinking it, guess whose fault that is? That's mine. So... Boom, points one on there. But all the, all the Dominion and um, Fordham beers that I've ever seen, they've got the date on them. That's a responsible thing to do, brewers. So let's get a cap popped off of this. Boom, one shot. Lovely Fordham crown. Let's see, we got got Sam Smith's pint glass out tonight. One of my favorites, as you know. Oh, that's a twist off, isn't it? I don't do twist offs, do I, guys? No. Let's get an aggressive pour on this. See what kind of head we can get off this lager beer. Yeah. Nice and fresh. Beer. Look at that massive head. I want a little Gonzo on this one. No, this isn't Gonzo Porter um, from Flying Dog, but I went a little aggressive on this. Now, why did I do that? Because every time I got in the pub, this is how they poured it first. I don't know why, but that's how they did it at the Rams Head at the time back in the day. They would hit it and it would pour, and you get a head off of the top of it, like a nitro head, you know, from a Irish stout or whatever they've got on nitro that night, but. You can see we form quickly here. Right now, it's a massive four-finger head. I think in reality, we're probably more like a three-finger head off this if you were a little less insane pouring the beer like I was this evening. But it's khaki off-white, as you can see. And if you hold it up to the light, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see lots of red hues coming through this. Um, Semi-transparent. I can see my finger sort of on the other side of the glass when I look at it here. But it's a really nice, you know, typical Doppel Doppelbach-looking beer. Um, the Eyinger Doppelbach is a little darker, so is the, um, the Weinstefan. Uh, that one's a little bit darker as well, but that just means they've got a bit more caramel malt in it, which I can smell caramel from here, and I haven't even got up to my nose for the aroma. So, we've chilled out now. We got, like I said, we got a little, a little like about three and a half, really tight form bubbles, no rockiness at the top at all, real nice looking head on that beer. Anyways, let's get a nose on this if we can through this through, through this foam cloud. Wow, big caramel. Toffee. A bit chocolatey. 
and the slightest, and I mean slightest bit of coffee in there, but the dominant aroma is malt and caramel in this sweetness, which is what you expect from a Doppelbach. At 8%, there's absolutely zero, and I mean zero, alcohol aroma. So, let's get a drink of this. This one we're going to let warm up. I like to let the Doppelbach warm up a bit right now. We're feeling about like um, 46, 45 degrees, somewhere around there. But let's get a taste of this. Wow. <laughs> As I remember. This is, bring, this is bringing back memories to DJ here. Let me get another taste of that. Well, wow. now, we've got sweet malts up in your face. We've got even dark fruits in this sort of, like, uh, almost cherries kind of dark fruits, like dehydrated cherries kind of. A little bit of coffee, a little bit of chocolate, but that, that boatload of caramel is up in your face. And this is a really easy drinking beer. There's absolutely zero alcohol taste at its current temperature. So... I'm liking this already, guys. This is bringing back nostalgia for old DJ here, but you know what? We're going to let this bad boy warm up a little bit, and I'll be back with you once we get it warmed up for the second part of this review. In my opinion, what you guys are all waiting for, right? If you're not, at least you're watching, guys. Be back in a minute. Hey, guys, I'm back. Okay. Man, I've been drinking on this. It's warmed up. We're about probably like... I don't know, 50 degrees, 49 degrees, somewhere right now. And man, the, that dark fruit characteristic I'm talking about in this and like sort of raisiny yumminess comes out. It does get a little bit of alcohol taste as it warms, but you know, most beers are like that. I'm really liking this beer. One thing I noticed on the label when I looked at the date again, this is a, actually a 2010 version. This is a two-year-old beer. Um, didn't notice that at the start. I thought it was a year old. Usually, you know, I keep it back in the fridge moving my house, been doing some fridge cleaning, and you saw the head on this one. This was by no way a beer that wasn't alive, and it's just freaking awesome. This beer aged is better than it is fresh, in my opinion. It develops and gets dark fruits almost like some of the Belgian, you know, doubles and triples and quads do with that dark fruity taste in it, and this is a lager beer. This is really impressing me that how this has developed over time. But remember, it's an 8% beer. You can sell it. This has been in the refrigerator since the, the day I bought it. So it got pushed to the back, didn't see it, and man, this, this beer is just drinking awesome right now. Somebody else may not like it or something, I don't know, but it tastes great. And I'm just nerding out on this beer. Anyways, guess we'll give you the final verdict here. Rate Beer is giving this an 84. Beer Advocate's giving it an 80. By my jaw box in here and my love and the taste of this beer right now, you can tell I'm not going that route. It's got the date on it. It's aged awesome. Um, I'm going to give this a 92. I'm going to give this an, I don't know, I, you know, I'm going to give it a 93. I'm going to give this an A. I'm really liking this beer. I do like the Eyinger better, um, but this is really awesome, and I'm super impressed how this is aged. It's a different tasting beer. When I was drinking, I'm like, man, I don't remember tasting it like this. And then when I saw the date on the label, I said, hey, dumbass, that's what's up. So anyway, really yummy beer. If you get one, I like it when it's new, but age, I don't know if you want to say one on two years, but age like this as happenstance has come in, it's tasting awesome right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be happy to finish the rest of it. I'm not going to chug it because I want to sip on it. So anyways, guys, remember, as always, think globally, drink locally support the craft beer movement. Let's keep this thing growing, guys. Get more beers like this that we can put in our fridge and forget about them and be surprised how damn awesome they taste when we pull them out. And until the next time, thanks a lot for watching. And as always, that's a big peace out.